Hey guys, well in this video we're going to talk about an enclosure for the fiber laser. Because my laser is mounted on this cart and it's mobile and I have it located out in my garage, I was a little concerned about anybody passing by going in and out of the house. I didn't want them exposed to any stray lasers. So I thought it was a good idea that I build an enclosure for this and so in the next few short videos we're going to be going over the design, the components, and actually building a enclosure for the Monport 20 watt fiber laser. All the components that I picked up for the fiber laser enclosure I picked up off Amazon. Uh, I'll provide a Amazon affiliate links. Uh, it'll support me and it'll also be easy for you to pick up these items if you choose to build an enclosure like this. So let's go on to Amazon and we'll take a look at all the items that I chose for this design. Alright, so let's take a look at the items I needed for the Monport 20 watt laser enclosure. So if you remember, I originally purchased this cart so that I could make the laser mobile. But I wanted to show you the cart for the dimensions here. This cart is 33 inches wide uh, by 16. That's perfect size for the Monport 20 watt fiber laser. So the next item that we purchased for the enclosure is a door. Now this is a uh, plexiglass acrylic door. This is green. Uh, this one is 16 by 24 and I'll have to cut it down. A cooling fan. Now I already had a fan, but if you want a fan for yours uh, to exhaust the fumes, uh, this is the same size fan I will be using. And I'm going to 3D print a, uh, a mount for that and a connection to a hose so I can just run it out a window or something. But this is an inexpensive 110 volt fan. Uh, the next is these three-way brackets or corner brackets, as you can see here. Uh, these make it really easy for assembly. And so I picked up a set of these. They're very, you know, inexpensive, $13 for a set. Just makes uh, assembly a lot easier. Uh, I picked up some of these angle brackets. Now I could 3D print some of these and you may do so as well. Uh, I'm not, I wasn't really sure if I'm going to need these, but I'm trying to sort out how to get the uh, fiber hose from the main power unit up to the head. Uh, and how I'm going to do that. So I picked up a th some of these just in case. So I'm not quite sure of these angle brackets, but it doesn't hurt to have some extra support. Uh, these door hinge brackets. I only have one door, but at the time I purchased this, I wasn't sure if I was going to need one or two. I do believe they offered uh, hinges for just a, a single door, but these weren't that expensive. So I picked up some of these brackets. It also comes with the door handle. Uh, next, I'm going to be using a welding curtain. Uh, and this will be going around the sides. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to use the whole welding curtain. This is six foot by six foot, so I probably won't use all of this. And that tends to happen when you're working on projects like this. You end up with uh, more pieces or parts than you really need. Uh, some extruded aluminum. Uh, I'm using 20 millimeters, so this is 20 by 20. These are 800 millimeters long which is about 31 and a half inches. That's plenty for uh, the height that we need as well as the length. We'll have to cut them down uh, to the correct size, but these should be plenty. This is a pack of 10 for $75. And then last is this slot cover. Now the idea behind this was uh, to put this in the channel and kind of hold the welding blanket in. I uh, haven't experimented with this yet, so that's, of course, theory. So I picked up some of this uh, slot cover. Uh, you choose the color you like. I picked green. That was a good contrast with the black here. So total for the whole thing, uh, minus the $70 here for the cart, is we're running around $200 for the slot cover, fan, aluminum extrusion, the welding blanket, the hinges and handles, these corner brackets, which you probably could save this $20. I'm not sure if I'll use these or not, but this is what I'm going forward with. And then the three-way corner brackets, which are going to come in really handy. All right, so that is a list of the parts, and I will put a Amazon affiliate link 
that way you can support my channel and also it'll be easy for you to find these items if you choose to build a similar enclosure so let's take a look at the model here so i drew this up in fusion 360 and as you could see it's it's a crude representation of the fiber laser it's not really to scale however it does give you a a good representation of what it's going to be like now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, 3d print some of these extensions and this is to get it just above the rim of the tray on the cart there will be times where i'll need to hang the rotary axis when i make sure that i clear the side of the cart. so this is why we need these extensions uh, these are just 3d printed and then we're just going to use uh, our aluminum extrusion to uh, go around and assemble this like so. These are full length here, the full 800 millimeters, and that gets well above the top of the cabinet. You can see that looks uh, really professional, really nice uh, fit on there. And this is going to drop right down in the cart. It right around the legs here now you notice that when I 3d printed these I put a little shoulder on these and that was to clear the extrusion here so I can get it nice and tight to the um, machine and then last is just this uh, plexiglass door I'm not I'm not quite sure if I'm going to have this go all the way down because I want to be able to swing it open and have it clear the rim of the tray so i'll probably leave this open it's not really going to matter because uh i don't think any little stray lasers are going to escape out of that this portion here you can see that the fiber laser will stick out the end here so i'm going to have to i was thinking about putting a couple more vertical extrusions on either side of this using those little angle brackets that i showed you and that still may be the way that i go or I may just put some kind of a slit in here uh, because this is going to have to go up and down. I still want to kind of get some protection in the rear and also have this uh, be able to pass through. Also on the side here, I'm going to have to have some kind of um, flap for whenever I have the rotary axis poking through here. So I still have to kind of work that out. But far this is what I've got so in the next video we're going to take a look at how to draw up these risers so we can get those 3d printed and then also we're going to start working on the enclosure itself we're going to get these pieces cut and fitted together and we'll do that in the next video guys if you're new to my channel and you're just tuning in you can click on that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner also if you're not receiving notifications, be on that notification bell. That way when I post a new video like this one, they'll send you a link. And if it's something you're interested in, you can stop by and check it out. As always, guys, please feel free to ask questions, make suggestions, or leave comments. Thumbs up if you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And most importantly, be safe.